Hi, you're about to listen to the fourth episode of Welcome to Fairmont. Didn't know this was our fourth episode? Don't start listening now. I mean, you can, but you should really go listen to our previous three episodes on SoundCloud. Welcome to Fairmont is a WKET production written, voiced, and all that other stuff that goes into making a radio series by Colleen Fries and Alana Orion. We put a lot of work into this because we love it, and we hope you do too. The only certainties in life are death, taxes, and existential fear. Welcome Welcome to to Fairmont. Fairmont. Things have mostly settled back to normal after our last broadcast. Except for those birds. No one has any idea what's up with them. Right. Things have mostly settled back to normal after our last broadcast, and we have some news concerning the demon in the vending machines and the drinking fountain crisis in East Unit. No, you don't. What? I'm taking over the show today. You can't do that. Who said that you could just come in and kick us out? The director. What? He doesn't change the plans for anyone. Well, he did. I have the proof right here. Ugh, it's legitimate. Wait a minute. Did you even look at the conditions on here? You're allowed to take over the show if, and only if, you and Willie Hartsfield, the football player who resolved the universe crisis when Psyche went crazy, are on together and have a civilized debate about your stances on human rights and ghost activities. Well, you'd better go find Willie then. I'm already here. Fine. Mics are all yours. Calm down. We'll get our show back eventually. <sighs> Ghosts and zombies and camp. Oh, fuck you. You know what I mean. I thought we'd never get them out of here. I'm actually kind of surprised they left as quickly as they did. They're scared of the director. Everybody is. If they tell you to do something, you're going to do it. They? Like, is there more than one? Oh, no. We just never met them and don't know what pronouns to use. But assuming that our director is sentient, we'd rather not say it. God, your radio station's weird. It's your radio station, too. Anyway, let's start with the football game at the beginning of the year. We're gonna get in so much trouble if we're found. You know we're already on air, right? Oh, sorry. Welcome back to our show, listeners. Didn't think we'd give up on it that easily, did you? Well, I did sort of think you'd given up when we walked out of there without a fight. So little faith in me. Tsk, tsk. So, listeners, as you've probably noticed, we've hijacked the radio signal and are currently hiding out near the radio room to broadcast. And the best part of the prank is, Patrick and Willie have no idea that this is happening. Right. So, now that we've got our radio waves back, we have an update on Craig. You know, the demon living in the vending machines in the athletic lobby. You may or may not have heard, but it has recently been discovered that Craig has been sending students through portals to other realities, and that they have been gone for days or even weeks at a time. Two students are still missing, and there is no word yet on where they were sent. Our thoughts go out to the families of those students so affected by a resident demon. On a happier note, Craig has agreed to meet with the school staff to discuss his habits and the safety of the students. Let us all hope that the meeting goes well. On a similar note, the drinking fountain problem that came up at the beginning of the school year has changed. After a significant amount of time, I was able to get Lydia, our zombified freshman, to tell me that the problem was in fact caused by the lake monster of North Unit. It's also recently come to our attention that another drinking fountain has been broken, this one in Central. And because of that, the problem has been moved up on the local poltergeist examiner's priority list. This means that they'll probably be here in about a month instead of coming at an indeterminate time. They've no regard for punctuality, do they? They're time travelers. What do you expect? They're what? Time travelers, you know... Yes, I know what time travelers are, but I thought time travel was outlawed. Maybe it is. What are you going to do about it? Huh, I guess nothing. Exactly. Anyway, someone's coming. Which is why you humans need to stop acting like you're so entitled to everything. You were a human once. You have no room to talk. You were one of those kids who came to the football game. I wouldn't have even been there if those idiots hadn't sent me there. That's not an excuse. You knew what would happen if you showed up. Well, it's not like you were going to win anyway. Well, that was getting heated. Maybe we should have intervened. Or maybe we can take care of one problem with another. It's really hard to keep hold of the connection this far away. Well, we did move to the band room, so... You just sit there and make sure the connection doesn't break, Psyche. 
You got it. So, what did you mean when you said that we would take care of one problem with another? Well, if they don't get along, it's going to be hard for them to team up, right? You wouldn't want that. True, but isn't that going to make the divide between the students worse? It might. So maybe we should let them hate us. If you think it will help everyone to live in harmony... You really aren't that clever. You're not in a position to judge my cleverness. Oh yeah? I'd like to see you try to hijack the radio signal. Fine. Just give me a second. You need to stop. No, I'm right and you know it. I'm never going to admit that. That's what I thought. Fine. I won't make any more name-related puns today. Ugh. That argument sounded like it was getting really heated. Maybe we should intervene. What do you think will happen if you do? Well, what's the worst that can happen? You know, we just get so thoroughly obliterated that we don't get to go to any sort of afterlife? I'm already in the afterlife. No, Psyche. I was talking about total obliteration ceasing to exist sort of deal. That's a pretty bad outcome. I don't care. I'm going to intervene before they destroy each other or the radio station. I'm coming too. What? You're just going to go to change the future? What are you doing? I'm taking care of this, once and for all. What? No! Oh my god! What's going on? It's the director! Well, I think that's over. William and Patrick have been forcibly removed from the radio station indefinitely for breaking their contract with the director. I'm pretty sure they were about to resort to violence when the director showed up, and I'm just gonna say, I'm really glad that it didn't fall to us to break up that fight. Yeah, that's something we can both agree on. And with that, it's time for us to sign off. Do good, don't forget to be awesome, and remember, happy nightmares. Welcome to Fairmont is a WKET production written and performed by Colleen Fries as Psyche and Alana Orion as Harmony, with guest voices by McKenna Kramer as Misty, Micah Coberman as Patrick, and Connor Simon as Willie Hartsfield. It is inspired by the podcast Welcome to Night Vale by Jeffrey Craner and Joseph Fink. Want your voice to be heard on the radio? Don't want to join radio even though it's fun and you totally should? Have ideas for the show? Drop by the media room after school on Tuesday or Thursday, or contact one of us to share your ideas or find out how to become a freshman on the show. And no, you don't actually have to be a freshman to do it. Tune in in two weeks for the next installment of Welcome to Fairmont. Until then, happy nightmares.